friends now, right? We're all good. All right, cool. Let's keep this thing going. You guys ready for the next comedian? All right, cool. From Atlanta, this next comedian hosts a bunch of awesome shows there. You guys put your hands together for Travis Jones. Yeah. Get up here, host, one more time, everybody. Um, Huntsville, I'm happy to be here. Uh, thank you guys for coming out despite the cold. Uh, I recently beat the cold a little bit myself. Uh, went down to the beach, took it out of it a little bit. I went with my, uh, with my girlfriend and her family, and we all had a pretty good trip. The person that probably had the best time was my girlfriend's little brother, because he was there with like three or four of his friends. They're in early high school, so they were on a break. We remember, you know, those early breaks. You get a little freedom with your friends. It's a pretty good time. When we got down there, we realized that those high school kids had brought a lot of weed with them. <laughs> like a Scarface amount of weed. <laughs> so mounted it on the table. And any time that the parents left, obviously they'd get very excited, run downstairs, start smoking, blasting like hip-hop slash reggae music. And at one point, I heard one of them yell, Ja! Rastafarian break! Because <laughs> if anything typifies the struggle of the Rastafari movement, it's for pasty white kids on vacation listening to Two Chains on an iPad. So, pretty much nailed it. Uh, also, anytime they smoke, they would burn like a bunch of incense. I guess to like cover up what they're doing, but like everyone knows what you're doing. No one does that just to do that, you know? Like at that point, like doing that to cover up your smoking is like trying to hide a murder by just like febrezing a dead body. No more. It does smell different. It does. It smells very different. I can't even tell what's happening. I, um, I have been doing some traveling though. I went, my dad moved uh, to Nicaragua, so I went down to Nicaragua. I had never even left the country before. It was a huge culture shock. It was, a, it's a really cool, beautiful country. They got like volcanoes, they got monkeys and jungles and stuff like that. And it's awesome. But when I got down there, I realized why I had never seen like an ad for tourism there before. Because if there is any truth in advertising, it would have to be like, Nicaragua! Do you like horses but think they are too fat all of the time? Come to Nicaragua where we have the skinniest horses in the world. Very skinny. Nicaragua. Do you like drinking soda? But we should go do it out of a bag instead of a cup? What? Come to Nicaragua! But that's what we do for some reason. <laughs> Nicaragua. Do you like camping? But wish it was always, huh? Come to Nicaragua! You will be outside for most of the time. <laughs> From Atlanta, um, like your host said, and uh, Atlanta's cool. I, do you guys have a hipsters here? Do you know what hipsters are? A little bit? Oh, rooms in the audience. We're in a mixed-use art facility, so I figured you guys know what I was talking about. Uh, but there's a ton in Atlanta, and there's also a big gay population, and they were there first. Um, and one thing that I've noticed is, like, if I'm not gay, but if I was, I'd kind of be upset. I'd be like, what, now there's a bunch of dudes running around in scarves and skinny jeans. Like, whose dick do I have to suck about it? Whose dick I get to suck? <laughs> Something I worry about. Um, but I, like I said, I'm from the South, and as I've been traveling more, I've realized that as you go to other parts of the country, when people learn that you're from the South, they make very like weird generalized generalized assumptions about you, because they think everything's very backwater, and that's just the way you grew up. Like I was in California, and I, there was a Lyft driver that was trying to describe a local bar to me. He was like. The vibe, bro, how do I describe the vibe of this bar? Well, you're from the South, right? You've probably been to like an old dirty brothel before. <laughs> yeah, I'm from the South, okay? It's kind of how we're raised. Down with the ODB, you know me, I'm from the S. <laughs> I was just crazy. I was like, yeah, of course, you know, you get to be 13 in the South. At that point, you're going to be baptized, take down an 11 point buck with your bare hands. You go down to the skank hole twice a week and wear those girls' outfits. That's just how we're raised. Uh, and God forbid I show up and those are new, clean brothels. They better be old and dirty. Just like my grandpappy taught me in between being racist and being racist. That's how we are in the South. You know? Just like you think. 
I did something I, I did something I missed out on as a kid. Uh, I played Life of the Board game recently. I don't know if anyone's ever played Life, but it's a pretty fun game. If you guys are looking to kill a few hours. Um, the thing about Life of the Board game, though, is up top you have to make like a super intense decision. Uh, the point of that game is you try to make as much money as you can. So your first option is you go into the life workforce, you get a life job, you start stacking paper, that's how you can attack it. The alternative to that is that you can put yourself in life debt. You can go to life college, you can come out, get a better life job, like a life doctor, a life lawyer, something like that. I'm like, all right, well, you know what? I'm worth it. I'll invest in myself. That's what I did, guys. I went $30,000 life in debt. I'm like, I'm playing this game strategically. I'm going to come out and be like a life doctor, and I'm going to come out and I'm just make a whole bunch of money. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick this game's ass. It's going to be great. And I'm real excited about my decision, and I get to graduation day, and I draw my salary card, and I draw my career card, uh, and I get entertainer at little to no salary. I was like, this is a dumb game. This is a stupid game. <laughs> played it right strategically and now I'm just back where I started. Like, I could have gone to life high school for this. Why'd I go to life college? This is dumb. This is ridiculous. My girlfriend was like, you realize it's not that ridiculous. In real life, you went to college, you're in debt, and you're trying to be an entertainer, trying to be a comedian. And I was like, how did it do that? That's crazy! But I was like, that has to just be like a weird coincidence, you know? So I go a few turns later, and I, I get a life tile, I draw a life card. It's like, uh, at a young age, your mom moves away, forcing you to choose between your mom or your dad. Skip your childhood. Guys, this game is on point! This game knows my life. Okay, not a weird thing. Uh, I don't know why I didn't trust it, though. It's called Life. The board game's called Life. The whole point of that game is that you get as much money as you can, and then it just ends. You can't use it anymore. Isn't that kind of how life works? Get political! Isn't that how life works here in America? Get more political! This wouldn't happen if Dennis Kucinich were president. Kucinich! Kucinich! Some of you guys remember 2004. That's good. Uh, so yeah, I did that. I, uh, I was a dumb little kid growing up, though. I always really wanted to be cool. Um, and all my friends were really into like cars and stuff like that, and I didn't care about cars, but I wanted to like seem like I was cool and I knew what all my friends were talking about. So I'd always just try to like hang in the conversation with like no information. I remember this one time in elementary school, uh, my friend was like, all right, Travis, let's say that you can show up with like the cutest, you can show up with any car to impress the cutest girl at school, but what car would you show up in? And I was just, without missing a beat, I was just like, Psh, probably like a gold PT Cruiser. Gold <laughs> PT Cruiser. Probably because I had seen like one commercial with a woman and a PT Cruiser in it. I was like, that's all I know about those two things. Put them together. Boom. Go marry forever. <laughs> that's not a good choice for a car. Uh, I don't know if you guys know what a PT Cruiser is, but it's like if you could bake cars to make them, it's like the easy bake oven version of a car. <laughs> if that makes sense. But that would have been if my friend was like, hey, you're a big like, music head, right? You're a big audiophile. Uh, let's say that you can play like any song you need a lady in the mood, like, what would you play? And I'd just be like, well, you know, I am really into music. And you know what I've been listening to lately? My favorite music is ringtones. You ever hear ringtones? Ooh, I love ringtones. <laughs> you know that song? Oh, my favorite song. That song that's like, that's my jam. I bought that on the daily. That's my favorite song. <laughs> it's a bad choice. Um, I um, rewatched a movie that I used to love as a kid. I used to love The Little Mermaid. I used to love that movie. And I rewatched it, and I realized that I have a huge problem with Ariel, The Little Mermaid. I can't watch that movie anymore. It makes me aggravated. Because the whole premise of that movie is that Ariel is, well, first of all, she's a little mermaid. I think we can get that to the way up top. <laughs> But she doesn't feel fulfilled with her life. She doesn't like how her life is going. She's like, well, maybe if I get some legs, that'll change something. Maybe then I'll feel good. If I could just sit down with Ariel, just for a second, I'd be like, look, sister, honey, child, girl, girlfriend, you are the princess of the Mer Kingdom. Your dad is god of the sea. Like, is that not enough for you? You wake up in the morning every morning and lobsters do your hair. 
You have a best friend, you call him Flounder? He's not a flounder! He's a chubby, tropical fish who's afraid to step to you because you're the princess of the Mer Kingdom. So have some perspective, you tiny cartoon barmaid. That'd be like Jaden Smith waking up one day and being like, I don't like my life! You're the Karate Kid for no good reason. So, shut it down. <laughs> Both your dads are cool, that's about it. That's about all you guys are cool. Yeah, despite everything you've heard, I'm a, I'm a hip-hop fan, I like rap. Um, I like older rap a little bit more, because I feel like... Like, if you go back and listen to old rap, like, like Big L and like Tupac and Biggie, all those guys had like a message to their music. You know, which I think is cool, like they went through a bunch of hardships and it informed their art, which I appreciate. But if you listen to rap now, it's just like a bunch of rich people complaining about their problems. I'm like, that's not what I want to listen to with my music. Um, if you listen to like Tupac or Biggie, like if those guys complain in their songs, what do they complain about? It's like getting shot in the face, you know, something like that. They had it rough. Uh, but if you listen to rap now, um, what do they complain about? It's all just like, mm, haters, people are mean to me on Twitter, oh no! Oh! <laughs> Maybe it's because you guys try to act gangster when you're not gangster, like newsflash, if you own a fragrance line, you are not a gangster. It's just ground rules. And if you rap about it, it kind of makes you seem like a little pansy. And I'll say that in front of all you people. I don't care. What are they gonna do? Send Drake to cry on me? <laughs> Put my sweater wet? Come on. Drake got famous for being in a wheelchair in Degrassi. I'll put it back in the wheelchair. I don't care. I'm not afraid of Drake. Taking a strong stance here tonight. Um, like even like uh, Wiz Khalifa, famous rap artist, his most famous song, Black and Yellow. In that song, he complains. Got so many diamonds on my watch, don't know what the time is. And that is the struggle. That's the struggle. But I do have some advice uh, for Mr. Uh, Khalifa. Uh, if you're looking and you're having trouble uh, with your watch, first of all, your watch is literally covered in diamonds. You could sell it in about like 10,000 swatches with a digital face and you'll just be good to go. Just anytime you're confused, throw another one of those bad boys on. Uh, the alternative is, uh, I know that you do a lot of drugs, Liz, uh, and so if you're looking at your wrist jewelry and you're having trouble telling what time it is, think you bought a bracelet. You probably just bought a bracelet. <laughs> so confused about your bracelet. And, uh, this is a new haircut. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, I had to get the hair touched up because uh, I had a few ladies over the course of a week say, hey, you look like an author, and that's not a sexy profession. Uh, you look like... No one's pining for authors. There's no one that's like, you know, I'm really into Arl Stein. He gives me goosebumps. Uh, people should say that, though, but they don't. Probably the only exception to the not sexy author rule is, uh, like, Ernest Hemingway, like a badass dude that wrote some cool stuff. Like, Ernest Hemingway is no longer with us, but if he was alive today, he'd be an old man, and the sea of pussy would be rolling in. You guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, don't be scared of that reference just because I yelled pussy in the middle of it. It's okay, it's good. It's good. I'll back away from that joke. Uh, I'll leave you guys with this. Uh, I, like to, I like to teach audiences a little something uh, when I do some shows, and this one's for the guys in the audience. If, uh, if any of you guys ever uh, have any trouble talking to ladies or anything like that, it's real simple. Um, all you gotta do, you see a girl on the street, you think she's cute, hey, that's cool. You know, walk up to her, real confident, make eye contact, learn that girl's name, and then make a joke with her name. Right. It works every time, it shows that you're present, it shows that you care, it shows that you're listening, it shows that you're intelligent. You see a girl on the street, she's like, my name's Maureen. Maureen, that is so interesting, I went to college for Maureen Biology. Mmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, soak it in. Oh, yeah. Danielle? Oh, my God, that's so funny, because I'm here with my friends, and when you walked in, your booty was so fine, it made my friend Danielle. He was like, look at that butt! That's a good butt! It's a good butt. It's a good butt. My name is Travis. Nice to meet you. Uh, what's that, Lauren? That's so funny. And the first thing I thought when I saw you, it won't be long until I'm luring you into my windowless van. <laughs> By a man, but it's worth it. Huh? Also works if you're a dude, so you know the dude you're attracted to, that's cool. Hey, just be like, what's your name? Philip, I'd like to fill up your butt with my <laughs> <laughs> you know, nice, I don't need to finish that trip. <laughs> you guys 
been fantastic. Thank you very much. I'm Travis Jones. Thank you.